if you're hiring someone to do a technical thing, something that requires specialized skill, and I'm not saying, talking like someone who knows how to run this specific software that you're using that, you know, these leads come into or whatever, like that's so simple, right? I'm talking about someone who has some skills in graphic design, someone who has skills in programming, someone who has CAD design skills, someone who, you know, who's an engineer, whatever. Do not hire that person and trying to get them writing your articles too, or doing your social media marketing. It's just not going to work out. But if you hire someone who's really good at social media management and that's what you have them doing for you and they're not completely busy, I think it's super reasonable to ask them to generate leads for you. However, you're generating leads, right? You have a process for generating leads. Have them do that process online. You got to teach it to them. Don't just ask them to, don't just say, hey, go generate leads for me. You know, that won't work. But if you say, hey, I would like you to also, in addition to your social media job, because I don't think it's, it's not take, or I know it's not taking you 40 hours a week and you're working full time. Here's this other process that I want you to start working on, right? So you've caught on. You've realized that the digital real estate game is taking over the physical real estate game. What I mean by that is every real estate transaction that occurs these days starts with a digital asset, such as this phone. Whether it's an interface, whether it's a software, whether it's a system, whether it's the MLS, whether it's an Airbnb or Verbo, it starts with a digital touch point. So in the digital asset series, we are gonna talk about marketing. We're gonna talk about digital marketing. We're gonna talk about content. We're gonna talk about branding. We're gonna talk about the very own things or verticals that lead to real estate transactions, which you will realize that the majority of them are all virtual. This is why we're starting this segment because as important as we understand physical real estate is and will always be indestructible because people will always need a place to live, we understand that now technology is playing a whole different ball game in the real estate space and you wanna make sure that you have this on your tool belt and you understand how to leverage these digital assets so that you can have these experiments that can then lead to these physical assets. Now the same rules of the game apply as they always do in the lab. Get your white coat on, gloves on, notepad, and let's build y'all. Experiment Nation, what's going on? Ruben here today. I'm so excited to have the man, the legend, uh, John Jonas, in the lab with us. And um, just to give a little bit of background, um, you know, I wasn't going to say this before, but this episode is literally brought to you by, I would have to say, onlinejobs.ph because if it wasn't for what John created, the platform he created, uh, quite frankly, we wouldn't have had 170 plus episodes. Uh, we wouldn't have had the company that we have today. And I certainly would not have been able to uh, have my TEDx talk when I talk about, you know, uh, stop asking, how can I, and start asking who, and, you know, I always say we're as good as our team. Uh, but I really, anytime I look at a business, I always want to find out, you know, I believe we're a reflection. You're the people, the person, the leader is a reflection of the business. And I know that John was was really fixing his own issue at the time, or at least dealt with adversity in his own life and ended up creating a solution that all of us could benefit from, which I love, by the way, how you, you're able to really highlight that everybody truly wins. So John, the founder of onlinejobs.ph and also the, the, the author of Outsourcing the outsourcing uh, lever um and in just john i'm just so excited to have you here man what's what's, what's going on how are you doing today <laughs> thanks man i appreciate it <laughs> it's good to be here it's good it's good so so i gotta ask you um you know look i always look at the background you had a computer science background you had kind of a system systemic kind of background and um i i i i have to ask what was the problem originally that you were trying to solve? Cause I know that you're also seeking for, for freedom. And there was, you know, from what I understand, something occurred in your life, especially with your wife, who's 
uh, you know, had some health struggles and that was kind of a big aha moment where you kind of were on the heels and you had to make a decision. But initially it was there, were you seeking out this side escape or were you just life hit you in the face and you just had to come up with a solution? I'm just curious at which, which one happened first, or if it was kind of the simultaneous thing that you were discovering. No, I was, there wasn't enough time in the day to get everything done. You know, like I was, I'm an entrepreneur. I didn't like having a job. I I've only had one job. I, when I graduated from college, I had a job for eight months. My only goal was to quit that job. And when I quit it, I was like, Oh yeah, sweet. This is awesome. I've arrived. You know, I was like 24 or something. And, and it didn't take super long to realize, Oh my gosh, I'm working 50, 60 hours a week in my own business, which is way more than I was working elsewhere. I'm making the same amount of money and you know, like there's just not enough time in the day. And so I needed, I needed to find a way to get work done and I struggled to get it done elsewhere. And I, I finally stumbled upon the Philippines and, and it just hiring the first VA there, which is what it was. It was a VA, not an OFS at the time. And we'll talk about that. Um, it was, it was life-changing, like so, so liberating to get someone who could finally help. So, so it wasn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't like I set out to, I set out to be a thought leader in outsourcing or something like that. You know, like I was just like, Oh, I need, I need, there's a, there's gotta be a better way than what I'm experiencing. Mm. Just trying to, trying to find a solution like every entrepreneur. And yeah. so at the time, and it's funny, we were just talking about this right before we started VA versus OFS. Cause I know you have a niche. There's a lot of VAs worldwide. You specifically go in an area. Uh, and, and why is that? Why do you go there? And why is it called on an OFS? So we're clear on, on, on what we're talking about here. Yeah. So uh, uh, yeah, like you said, VA has, you know, a virtual assistant. People feel like it's a secretary. It's an assistant. It, you know, like it's someone who's not really skilled. They can't really do much. They can follow directions, but that's about it. It's kind of robotish, which is super crappy because that's not who I hire. And it's not who people want to hire, you know? Um, so when I say I stumbled into the Philippines, like it's a, it's a, a Philippines. First of all, the Philippines is a different experience than anywhere else in the world. Um, it just is. And, and yeah, there are some of the same qualities of the Philippines elsewhere, but there's this whole big group of, of cultural things that make it a really, really good place to, to hire people over from overseas. Um, and then I'm hiring specialists. Like I have, I have four really good programmers on my team. They're not virtual assistants. You know, I have a good user interface designer. I have someone who's really good at running Facebook ads. She doesn't make Facebook posts. She doesn't do social media marketing or social media management or whatever. She runs Facebook ads. That's it. You know, um, I have a really good copywriter all in the Philippines. So I, I call them, OFS, like you said, online Filipino specialists, because that's what you want to hire. You know, you want to hire someone who's good at doing lead generation. You want to hire someone who's, who's good at doing lead generation for, for sale by owners, for realtors, you know, like someone's good at that. Yeah. Um, and you can hire them part-time or full-time and they can do other things too, but it's not just a, it's not a secretary. Yeah. I want to, I want to highlight what you said for a second there, John, because I think it's really important. And you highlight this in your, your, again, uh, you have a lot of great resources online so people can you know, seek it out. Like one, for example, is the one VOA challenge, right? And you talk about a mistake that I think a lot of people make. And it's that I want to hire someone who can do everything. Jack of all trades, designer, take my calls, lead generation, social media. And it's, you know, for those who have maybe read the book, the E-Myth, you really need to break down and chunk every single task down to, okay, you know, this person does the fries, this person does the burger, this person does the bun. And is that, I'm, I'm very curious, is that how you approached it at first? Because I think it's, it's, it may be obvious to you or most of us, 
But I think we often make that mistake that we need to find that one person. And you know what? We never find that person. Do you, have you heard? I mean, you have tons. You're, you're hearing it all the time. I'm curious. Is, is that the main key takeaway here? No, um, because I found that one person. Mm. Um, I mean, the first person I hired. Okay, so you're absolutely right. You should break it up. However, when I first started, I didn't. And the first person I hired, actually, it, it was the agency that, that I went through. And it was the third person they brought to me because the first two were completely non-functional. Um, the third person they brought, he was willing to show up every day. He didn't know anything. He wasn't skilled at anything. He told me since then he was scared, super scared when he started working for me because he was going to let me down. He was going to be embarrassed. He, he didn't know anything, right? So I just started teaching him and I started teaching him anything I wanted done. I would teach him how to do it. So I taught him how to write these articles and how to submit them and where and how to write the resource boxes. I started teaching him SEO behind that. I, start, I taught him WordPress. I started teaching him some online marketing stuff. I taught him how to run paid ads. I taught, I taught him all these things, right? So he became a jack of all trades. Um, that was 2005 when I started working with him. Just last week, I promoted him. He still works for me today. Um, I promoted him to the manager of onlinejobs.ph, right? Like he's, he's now managing the whole software system, right? He's so dang good. And, and part of that is just like, he's super detail oriented. He's willing to show up every day. He's willing to speak his mind. He's, you know, he's like willing, he's willing to work. Right. So, but the second person I hired was a programmer. That's all he did. Right. Um, and that was, that was a really good specialized thing. So here's, here's my advice for a lot of people. If you're hiring someone to do a technical thing, something that requires specialized skill, and I'm not saying, talking like someone who knows how to run this specific software that you're using that, you know, these leads come into or whatever, like that's so simple, right? I'm talking about someone who has some skills in graphic design, someone who has skills in programming, someone who has CAD design skills, someone who, you know, who's an engineer, whatever. Do not hire that person and try to get them writing your articles too, or doing your social media marketing. It's just not going to work out. But if you hire someone who's really good at social media management and that's what you have them doing for you and they're not completely busy, I think it's super reasonable to ask them to generate leads for you. However, you're generating leads, right? You have a process for generating leads, have them do that process online. You got to teach it to them. Don't just ask them to, don't just say, Hey, go generate leads for me. You know, that won't work. But if you say, Hey, I would like you to also, in addition to your social media job, because I don't think it's, it's not take, or I know it's not taking you 40 hours a week and you're working full time. Here's this other process that I want you to start working on. Right? No, that's not, Hey, I want you to design my graphics because that person's not going to do that. Hey, I want you to write this sales copy for me. That's not reasonable. Right. But another process that you can teach right there is I, I think is reasonable and I've done it dozens of times. So, so John, do you think, cause I just you know, read the book, um, or at least I'm actively reading it. Good to great. Right. And it gave me a little bit of insight. And I don't know if you've, you've uh, had a copy, but he said something key and I, I want to highlight because it has everything to do with what you're saying, right? You, I heard qualities and also heard the training, but I would love to hear from an OFS perspective in your world, what you've seen, if you believe this to be true. So I have a quote here. It says, uh, the executives who ignited the transformations from good to great did not first figure out where to drive the bus and then get people to take it there. They first got the right people on the bus and the wrong people off the bus and then figure out, figured out where, where to drive it. I'm very curious. Do you ever feel you, you get to a point where, Hey, you're really good at Facebook ads and I don't know anything about it. What do you suggest we should do? Or do you feel like from an OFS perspective, from the most part, you're really steering that ship? Like which one is it? I'm curious. I've done both. Okay. And I think it's really, really hard to say that, and, you know, I, I read good to great. Yeah. 
I have a hard time with it because mm, interesting. he's, he's talking about like the, the 1% of 1% of people like of companies, right? Like, Oh, yeah. if you want to be Facebook, well, here's what you should do. Well, like that's terrible advice for most people because so, so far since 2004, n- nobody else has been Facebook, right? Yeah. Um, there's one, one, Right. And man, I don't know how many people that have come to me and been like, I'm building the next Facebook. Like, okay, that's fine. Like go try build the next Facebook. Right. So that advice, I feel like just, you know, they didn't figure out how to get this done. I don't believe that. Okay. um, Number one. And I don't think it's great advice for people because a lot of people don't have the capacity to just say, Oh yeah, I'm just going to hire the right person. And not understand anything about it and just let them go and do the whole thing because you don't hire the right person and it bankrupts you. you yeah. Know? So, so let's talk about that for a second. Cause maybe it's the right quality. So I have a, a lead uh, editor who literally I asked her a key question. I remember at the time I was still doing the interviews and I said, you know, if you don't know something or something along the lines of, you know, what do you do? And she says, Google is my best friend. And I I remember just, it it just hit me because it was like, I love that. Like that's being so resourceful. And you talked about your manager now didn't know a thing. So I'm curious, like, is it, are you going for the qualities that shows that someone is willing to learn or you're going for the skill set and the specificity of like, Hey, this person has it and now can steer it. And I know these questions are like, it's one or the other, but I'm just, I'd love to hear like what your thoughts are on, on that, if there's a right way to do it, a wrong way to do it. Cause I know you've really done this very, very well from and help multiple people do it well. So I want us to really start rethinking the way we should approach these there, situations. There are different ways to do it. Like yeah. if I'm hiring a programmer, I don't want, I, I want to hire someone who has, a, who has, has some experience and I would like them to be smart because it, you know, it makes a difference. Yeah. Um, if I'm hiring someone to write content, content writing changes with the internet business, you know? So like I've hired people to write content and now they're not writing content at all, or they've gone from writing content to not writing content to back to writing content. And, but it's completely different, you know? Yeah. So I feel like there are different ways to do this and it depends on the role and it depends on the person who's hiring. Like, I don't feel like everybody needs to fit into this one mold uh, like a good to great like don't do this yeah. you know th- this is the only way to run a business is hire all these other people to do this i, I don't feel like that's right what, what you said about that a person who said google is my best friend i feel like for a lot of entrepreneurs it's really really helpful to get something off of your plate that you're currently doing so that google can be your best friend because for a lot of people they just don't have the capacity at all to try and figure something out, right? Much less to try and hire someone to do that thing for them. They're just drowning. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like for most people, the first thing they should do is hire someone to do something that they are currently doing. And then here's like the classic example. Everybody wants to hire someone to build my website, right? Like build me a better website. That's a hard ask. Like, do you know what your website that you want looks like? Do you know the design features of it? Do you know, do you have examples of other sites that you want to model? Do you have the copy written for it? Because you're not going to hire someone that's going to do all of those things or it's an agency and they're expensive. And, um, and and if you try and do that up front, you're not just going to say, Hey, build me a website. It just doesn't work like that. You're going to add 10 hours a week of management to your process. Yeah which you're not managing it super well because you don't understand the process and you don't have the capacity to manage it well. And all the rest of the things that you're doing are suffering now because you're spending less time on those than you were before. Right? So I feel like this is, there's, there's different ways to do this. Um, Hiring the right people is awesome. Just doesn't always work the way you want it to, you know? So, so when you do, Okay. So just because I, I hear this a lot, right. And I've had VAs uh, or OFS, I should say respectfully um, for, you know, quite some time now. And so what I'll hear from someone who's never used them is I think there's a level of getting overwhelmed of, you know, again, 
I hate to, I hate this word perfectionist because I don't really believe in it. I believe in having a minimum viable product, get it out, refine, retune, right? But people are control freaks. And so for someone to just giving someone tactical advice, who's listening or watching this to, okay, great. You have tons of stuff. There's not enough hours in the day. We all know this, especially if you're operating at a high level or anyone, what is the first tactical thing you should do? I know you talked about getting something out, out of the checklist of something that you you're already doing, but what does that actually look like? What should one do? Do I make a list of everything? Do I screen share? Do I show the process? Like what do you advise all right. uh, is, is best for, okay. to get that one task out the way. Okay. This is so good. This is such a good thing to talk about. So, um, the very first time I hired someone, I was doing this marketing process, writing articles, publishing them yeah, with an article. You also have a, you have to have a good headline. You have to have links in the article. You have to have a resource box. It has to link to somewhere. So you have to have something, some content, right? And I hated it. I hated the whole thing, but it was so dang effective that I would force myself to do it. Right. So I tried outsourcing this multiple different ways. It all sucked, including what is today Upwork. That sucked because he would do the writing and then not the rest of it. And if I taught him the rest of it, well, the whole platform of Upwork, the whole goal is to get a job finish your work, get a review, move on to another employer so you can get paid more. Right. Um, well that didn't work. That wasn't going to work for me. Um, so I hired this guy in the Philippines. He didn't know anything, but I could teach him how to write the articles. So that was like amazing for me to, to be able to teach this process. So this is, this is my process. Here's what I did to teach it. And here's what I recommend people do to teach it. Please. So, um, there's screen recording software, Snagit, Loom, Tiny Take. There's tons of these now. At the time, it was Jing, Jing or Camtasia, right. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, Camtasia was like the first thing. And when Jing came out, it changed my life. Uh, Jing's not even an option anymore, but I use Snagit now. Yeah. Um, so it's screen recording software that sits open on your computer. You press record, you drag it out until like, like a certain area of your screen and it's going to record your screen and it's going to record your voice and it's going to record your mouse and it's going to record whatever goes on. So then I'll just talk through it. Like, Hey, I want you to write these articles. Here's this article that I wrote. Here's how I did it. I went to these sites. I searched this thing. I found this information. I, I wrote this thing. Here's the headline. Here's how I wrote the headline. Here's how I decided to, here are these 10 different ideas for headlines. Like, I don't know if you can see this but I keep this taped up. Like it's uh, 10 types of titles that 10 types of titles that tend to perform well. Right. Okay. Well, I give that to them and show that like on my screen to them. And then I would show them how to do it and I'd send them the video. And with these screen capture things, it's so stinking easy to send the video. You don't have to upload it to your server. They upload it to the cloud and give you the URL. Right. And then they go and do the task and it's not done right. And, and that's, that's part of it, right? It's not going to be done right the first time. And this is what you talked about. Like people want perfection. And if, so I'll just tell you right now, okay. I have 38 people on my team that work for me now. I started with one and then I got two and then I had three, right? I'm going to suggest you start with one. Yeah. My salaries today range from $400 a month to $2,000 a month for full-time work. Um, and you at like $400 a month, you have someone who's probably in school, in college, they don't know how to do anything, right? They're a total beginner newbie at everything. You're not, they're not, you're not going to find an expert at anything for $400 a month. Right. And then you move up to like, you know, you got seven to $800 a month where you've got someone who speaks perfect English. You have, you know, you move up from there and you're going to find talented designers, programmers, um, Facebook ads people, right? And, and, and in, in that, you have all these different skills and you have a range of salaries, right? Um, so if, you, if you're going to hire someone to do something that you want done, um, if what you want done, your task is super basic, you're going to hire someone on the low end. If what you want done, what you want to teach someone is, is something more that you would like, like you're going to teach them social media marketing, 
right? You're good at social media marketing, but you want someone that already has some social media marketing experience, likely, right? It just makes your job easier. Absolutely. Um, so you're going to hire someone that's a little bit more expensive. And expense isn't, isn't everything in this. Um, you can certainly find people that, that are less expensive and experienced. Um, you just have to recruit well. So I kind of got sidetracked there. Well, yeah, no, no, we're going through the uh, videos, SOPs, yeah, um, and and the importance of, of 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 how to get that one task off of your plate. And people trying to be perfectionist, and then you know they and then refining it when it comes back and it's not what you wanted. I guess that part I'm interested of knowing how you. And I have a second question to follow up on that. Okay, when it comes back and it's not perfect, most people are like, "All right, let me just do it." Yeah. Right. This didn't work. Right. I mean, yeah. you get, you see this all the time. I've spoken with multiple people who, who have maybe a, have had a bad experience. And what I like about what you're saying is, you know, I've been doing this for years now where it's a process of refinement, but what does that refinement look like in your world? Or you, you've seen people refine, like, is it course correction? How do you course correct? Is it because you said a lot of here, but I'm curious, do you also ask why or, or tell them why they're doing something. I'm very curious. Uh, so I always try and tell why. Mm. So this is one of the, one of the really great things about the Philippines in outsourcing. We decided a long time ago that it was not wise to tell people why, oh, because then they would steal your business. Right. Like then they won't. And that comes from India. It's not, the Philippines, they are not entrepreneurial. They don't want to steal your business. Loyalty. They just want a job. Yeah. And so telling, I try and explain the why behind stuff every single time. And that why definitely helps them solve problems. And that's one of the great things about the Philippines, again, is they're willing to think through something like you leave out a step. They're willing to try and read between the lines and figure it out and solve it. It doesn't always happen. And very often what'll happen. I mean, I've, I've seen, I've had lots of employers send me stuff like, Oh man, this person I hired, they suck. I gave them such good instructions. They can't even do it. And they'll send me their instructions. And I'm like, dude, I have no clue what you're asking me to do here. Like no, no clue. And you think your instructions are so perfect or so often with me, I find that if I ask them to do something and they do it wrong, I go back and look at my instructions and it's like, oh yeah, that was super unclear. I thought it was so clear when I recorded that screen capture video, right? Not clear at all. And so for me, what I've found is if it gets done wrong, there's probably a disconnect in what I think I taught them, or there's a disconnect in my assumption of what they understand because of what I understand. Um, and so there's, there's just a disconnect there. And so I have to make that, I have to do that teaching. And because the Philippines, because Filipino, the Filipino culture is super, super loyal. Like, I mean, the first person I ever hired still works for me today. The programmer still works for me today. You know, like I have people that I've hired in 2005 and six and seven and nine and 10, 11, they all still work for me today. I think I've hired like, I don't know, 50 people in the last in the last, since 2005, right? And 38 people work for me today. Um, so with that, you get this loyalty. And so anything you can teach, even if it's just way easier for you to do it yourself, if you can teach them to do it, it'll return on itself 50 times, you know? Um, mm, that's so Or important. more. I love and that. so, yeah, it's hard. But sometimes it's just way easier. Last night, I did it. I did it myself. Um, because there was this, there's this process I've been working with someone on and I knew from the beginning, I don't ever want her to touch this thing. I don't want her to touch it, but I'm going to see if she figures it out right anyway. And I went back and forth three or four times on it, knowing I could have fixed this in five minutes. Instead, it took me three days. She didn't get it right. I finally just said, you know what? This is stupid of me. Because she's never going to deal. I don't want her to deal with this thing that's causing the problem. But I've tried to see if she could do it just so that I didn't have to spend these five minutes. But what were you doing there, though? Were you because I think there's that, that sounds very interesting because it sounds like 
I, it sounds like there's a place and a time for that, John. So yeah. are you saying that maybe that was a one-off? Because if it's something repeatable, it sounds like it definitely pays off to go through maybe a three days of the grunt to get 300 days of freedom back. I, I'm curious, what are your thoughts I, there? I can't think of the last time I did this, that I, <laughs> I fixed it for them. It, yeah. it doesn't happen. That's why I have an example for you because last yeah. night I did it. Um, so for me, because I hire people long-term and occasionally I have a part-time person, but almost always everybody's full-time. Uh, I, 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 I just won't do it for them. I will teach it over and over and over again until, until we get it right. Mm. Um, because in that learning, they're discovering things and I'm teaching them stuff about the business. And, and the next time, not only do they know how to do that thing, but they probably also understand three other things because of the process. That's so good. Let me ask you, John, do you, and we touched on this a little bit, but I, I want to hear it from you. Do you hire initiative or do you teach it? I don't have an answer for that. I, I haven't been sophisticated enough to know. I'm not, I'm not that sophisticated. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, just because I'm wondering like if there's a way to instill initiative or it's a matter of like one thing that I know uh, a gentleman does, and I think he was telling me he raises his kids that way. Uh, oh, David Chance. He was for every question is a question back, right? So, hey, Ruben, do you think I should do this? Well, tell me, Roxanne, what do you think you should do, right? And, and so I, I was wondering if there was something there where you found, you know, from your experience that there is a way to maybe get someone to think for themselves or there's a, you know, because this is something I'm still trying to figure out sometimes as well, where I'm like, hmm, like maybe, maybe I, I've been spoon feeding too much or, and I, I, I just wanted to see if you had any insights on that. Not really. I mean, I, I could no. talk about what I, my thoughts on it, but I'm not an expert on that. And I don't really, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to be any better than what other people think. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. That's interesting. So we talked about this offline a little bit uh, and in, you know, about the impact that you're having. I, and I want to, just because we're talking so much about, you know, the systems, the, the process, but I want to just, you know, zoom out and talk about the impact it's had in your life, um, you know, and then the impact that you've seen for others. So, you know, what does it look like when you're able to actually outsource everything? I know there's this magic number that, that you think you, you put out there as far as how much time you're actually working in a week uh, and, you know, the freedom that you're able to give for yourself, et cetera. But I want to give people just a little bit of a tidbit of a taste of, of what that could look like. So in 2008, I was forced into working the four hour work week. Um, my wife has, like you, you mentioned this, my wife has preeclampsia with our third baby. She goes, it has to go on strict bed rest for three weeks. I have two other kids I have to take care of. I sent an email to two guys in the Philippines that were working for me and said, look, here's the situation. I, I can't work. I need you to take over. Right. And they took over my business, which was shocking to me. I didn't realize how good they could be at the time. Um, and when I came, when my wife had the baby for two months, she struggled with postpartum depression. So there was like three month period where I really kind of just didn't work. And I came back to the business and things were running fine and, um, improvements hadn't been made because that was my job, but they had maintained. Right. And that was a big deal. Like they had thought and they had worked and, um, and I never really went back to full time. I figured out that not working at all is not enough for me. Um, but I've worked about 17 hours a week since then. And since then I've started, I don't know, a lot of businesses and like base them around the idea of how much, how much can they actually do? Like, could this person in the Philippines actually do everything for this business? If, if I were the CEO and I was, just directing the business. Well, is this possible? Yeah, it's possible. Um, I mean, I, the first, the first business I did that with, uh, like he built the website, he wrote the content, he did the marketing. Um, he sends me reports of how much it makes that business made me 
was making me 10 to $15,000 a month for a lot, for a lot of years. Um, and I know I, not that I never touched it, but I mean, there were like six months, six month periods where I never touched. I never, I never thought about it because it was just running so smoothly with him. Right. Um, so, you know, you can take this pretty far with outsourcing and it's not an overnight thing for most people. Like it was for me where, you know, I, I work 17 hours a week. Uh, when we get off of this, I'm going skiing. It's, it's 10 30 in the morning and I'm going skiing. Right. So on the other, on the other side of it, what's the impact? So part of, part of the impact, I don't know because we yeah. don't track it. And we talked about this because when I built onlinejobs.ph, so when I was hiring people before 2005, six, seven, the only way to hire someone in the Philippines was either go there yourself, which you know is not really an option, or use an agency. And the agency stuff sucked. It was just so crappy. And in 2008, I was like, I'm trying to recruit someone else on my own, or I wanted to recruit someone on my own, and there just wasn't a way. And I just thought, there's got to be a better way. And so I went to the agency and asked them to hire me a programmer. And I built online jobs. I had that programmer build online jobs for me, which at first I was like, oh, is this going to be weird? Like I have someone in the Philippines building a website for Filipinos to, for <laughs> me to hire them. Right. And yeah. not weird at all. He didn't care. He thought it was awesome. And so I, I, but I built what I wanted. I didn't want someone else a middleman managing something where they weren't yeah. really managing. It was up to me to manage, but there was a middleman in my, in my way. I didn't want the ongoing fees of silliness, you know, like they're perfectly capable of working from home just as well as they are working from a, an agency's office. And I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be Upwork either. Where like, we're involved in every single detail. Like if you leave our platform, then, then we're going to ban you and we're going to fine you and what, you know, like that's so silly to me. Yeah. So I built what, what I wanted. Like I want to recruit someone on my own, like indeed.com, but just in the Philippines. And then when I hire them, I just want it to be done. Like I want onlinejobs.ph, which is my site to go away. Right. And I just work directly with that person and I pay that person directly and there's no markup and there's no fees and there's nothing, there's no contract. There's none of that stuff. Right. So in terms of like total impact, I don't have a number for you because it's un unbelievable. Because until you messaged me the other day, I had no idea that you had people working for you, right? Like, yeah. and we have so impact a little bit. I'll give you some. Um, we've certainly had hundreds of thousands of people hire people in the Philippines, like created hundreds of thousands of jobs. Um, last month we had like. 11,000 employers sign up at onlinejobs.ph last month. Wow. Um, we had like 45,000 Filipinos, new Filipinos create accounts last month. Um, by, by the way, is there, is it a free for them? I've never even thought of this. It's free for them. Completely free for them. That's awesome. We do require a bunch of them so that we can, so that we can put oh, yeah, source a pool. Oh, okay. Interesting. Got it. Um, we require them to verify a bunch of stuff. With yes. Us. Yes. Yep. Just That's to prevent, it. just to make it difficult for a scammer. Right. Yeah. Um, so we probably get, we get somewhere between 10 and 20,000 jobs posted every month on onlinejobs.ph. Um, so, you know, like it, there's, there's a good impact. I get, like I told you before, I get emails every day from employers saying, thank you so much. It's changed my life. My OFS is amazing. Yeah. I built this team. They allowed me to build this business. You know, that's, that's certainly there. Um, and it's cool to see. It's, it's definitely cool to see the impact, like to, to have people tell me, yeah, man, I, I, I'm, I built a seven figure business because of what you taught me in, in hiring people overseas. Cause I couldn't have done it otherwise. Yeah. I think, I think people need to hear that. And that's where I was going with that because I'm, I know a lot of, a lot of people in this space who do know. And then I know some people like, Oh yeah, but those are VAs. Or, or, like I had someone tell me a pretty close to me as a coach of mine. He's like, 
you know, they're, they're not going to be able to handle that. And I'm like, eh, that's not true. Right. And, yeah. and, and again, cause I've had that experience, but so that's why, you know, that's why you're even here. It's cause it's, it's, it's kind of like my thank you of echoing this and really being able to teach people of okay, Kate, this is possible. I know it's worked for me, uh, you know, and it's clearly worked for you and it's clearly worked for hundreds and thousands of employers out there. And I know this because when I call my bank, I recognize the accent now. And <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? But and, you wouldn't recognize it if you didn't know. Right. Exactly. And I was like that too. I yeah. started asking like, Hey, yeah. are you in the are Philippines? You, yeah. <laughs> and they'd be like, Cebu? yes, sir. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? And I know it because I've been around for, for the longest time. I know the culture. It's like a family to me now. So like when I pick up the phone, I kind of smile now because I know I'm like, and you know, somewhere now, somewhere deep, you, you know, I can't imagine how fulfilling it is for you. Cause you might, you would have to think you have something to do with that because I've tried a lot of different platforms and I have to say yours by far is stands apart. And I love the no strings attached concept. It's you created it for entrepreneurs and you understood the issues, the aches and pains we've been, you know, we've been on, on, on and off. Sometimes we turn it off. Sometimes we turn it back on. We're hiring a lot and then we turn it off. Then we turn it back on. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. And that's what you should do, right? Right. Like, I get people, uh, like you should sign up for onlinejobs.ph, pay the subscription, hire someone, and then cancel, right? We have, we have, I don't even know how many people, hundreds or thousands of people who leave it on all the time. Th there's a lot of people that are just recruiting all the yeah, time. Yeah, that's, like, that's, that is, yeah, we are doing that. You know, I, I've had people tell me I have, I've hired 400 people off of onlinejobs.ph. I have 400 people working for me right? Like, good for you. That's sweet. Um, <laughs> but most people go on and they, they pay it one time and they cancel it. And awesome. You know what? I don't care. Cancel it. I know you're going to come back. And I know that because the data shows it. Mm. I love that. So uh, real quick, I, I want to ask you this because uh, I think you've given us so much uh, of your time and value and, you know, real quick for, I like giving my listeners and, and, and those who are watching some tactical advice, what are some of the big no-nos? And I'll, I'll, I'll call mine out. Uh, I completely changed this again. We're always refining. That's why I took your challenge after years of using your platform. Like, I think we're not, not maximizing. So I went back and I listened, you said, and I created this entire workflow to not interview right away. Cause we had, you know, other VAs interviewing VAs and took him through your workflow. So I know that was a big for me, like, wow, being, being like, we we're kind of doing things incorrectly, even though we had hired great people, um, the process wasn't right. So what are some big no, no's even from like a beginner who's like, okay, I got to get this one task off of my hands. You, what is a big no, no okay. to the guy who has guy or gal who has a big company who's looking to scale just, I'll give just you two or three. Yeah. Uh, number one, do not narrow it down and shortlist candidates up front. Like don't go and try and find the one and then contact them. Mm. Filipinos are too loyal for that. They, if they have a job and you go and find the one and you contact them, they're probably not going to respond to you because they already have a job and they're not going to leave that job because that's not how they roll, which is really amazing. Once you hire someone, right? Like yeah. they don't jump ship because they got a higher job off higher paying job offer. Right. Um, so rather than finding the one and, and contacting them, hire the best available person. People always want to hire the best person. There's no such thing as the best person. Mm -hmm. There's the best available person. And that the best doesn't necessarily mean the best skilled person. It means the best fit because mm -hmm. when you're hiring someone long-term personality matters. You know, like it, just because someone's super skilled, when I interview people, sometimes I'll be like, oh, I got an email from this candidate. I don't really, oh, I don't want to open this email. Where like others, I'm like, oh, I'm so excited to open this email because I'm super excited about this person. The first person skills may be really, really high, but that's just, it's not going to work long-term. It's it, right. So that, that's important. Um, so that's, that's number one is hire the best available person and best doesn't necessarily mean highest skills. Number two, skip the video interview. Um, everybody wants to jump straight to a video interview. Like, Oh, I got these candidates. I'm scheduling interviews right now. No, don't schedule interviews, email them, do an email interview first. And this is especially 
important with the Philippines. They don't want to do a video interview with you. They're scared. They are, they're scared of being embarrassed. They're scared that you won't understand them. Their English may be perfect and flawless, but they're still scared. They're scared that you're going to see their living conditions. They're scared that you're going to hear chickens clucking or dogs barking. They're, they're scared. And that, that fear goes down the longer you have a relationship with them. So if you'll start your interview process by emailing them, ask two, three, four questions in an email, do it five, six, 10 times. And by the time you've gone multiple days, getting multiple responses back from them, it, now your chances of doing a video interview go way, way up. Where before, if you, the first thing you do, you schedule, try and schedule 10 interviews with people. Number one, you're wasting your time because you try and schedule 10 interviews, you're talking about five hours instead of sending 10 emails, which is, which is five minutes, right? Like such a massive difference. You're accomplishing almost the exact same thing. Um, but you try and schedule 10 interviews, you're going to get five of them who won't schedule. They'll just disappear. You're, you just dropped them because they won't even schedule with you. Even though being on an interview of video has nothing to do with the job they're going to do. So you just lost good candidates of the five who will schedule three of them won't show up and you're just going to be so frustrated. So anyway, there's, there, those are two, two good tips. Another, another really big mistake is, Oh, I just want to hire hourly because, because it's low, it's low commitment, right? That low commitment is low commitment to yourself. Mm. Like it, you're, if you're not willing to commit to them, you're not willing to commit to yourself to growing your business because that's, that's the big difference. If you hire someone full-time, you commit to that. You commit to working on your business. You hire a person, someone hourly, you commit that I can't work on my business. I just have to work in my business. And because if they're not busy, I don't have to pay them. I don't have to worry about it. You hire someone, you hire someone full-time. If they're not busy, that's on you. You're still paying for it. It's not a ton, but you got to work on your business now. And that's like, the big thing that changes someone from, from being like this in their business. Like I, I got to answer these emails to like becoming the CEO. Love that. Love that. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, real quick. What's the, uh, when you look at, you know, I think we talked about hiring a lot in silos, right. And well, at least we were talking about it individually in that topic, but then we got to the point where we we're talking about building teams. Is there, you know, what advice do you have that you think stands out of, you know, building teams. Um, what does that look like? Do you, you know, we use agile scrum, we use like a scrum method, right. Uh, which is kind of pretty neat, but I'm very curious, like what have you found helps, uh, in, in, in your world? No, I, I have no idea. I built my team super organically. Yeah. One person at a time as I needed it. I don't have, I have zero advice. <laughs> That's interesting. I love how humble you are, man. This is it's just very straight and simple. I love that. I love that. Which honestly, I think is the way to go. I think people overcomplicate it sometimes, right? Uh, often. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I see, I, I see so much analysis paralysis in this, like, Oh, I need this team, but I don't know how. And yeah. like, no dude, just go hire one person. This doesn't work for everybody. Yeah. You know, like some personalities of employers, this just isn't going to work for you. But you get them to work together. Like even when we talk about your 38, do you, what I'm saying is, do you get even a VA to start teaching another VA to do oh, something? Oh, for sure. Like, yeah. Okay, cool. So I think that's where I was going. Like when, when you start thinking about, okay, great. I got my second one now, getting them to kind of work together and building that oh, ecosystem. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. Awesome. So this episode, honestly, is brought to you by InvestedTalent.com. I got to call it out. I saw, I didn't say this in the, when, when I introduced you, but you have a podcast called The Secret Sauce of Outsourcing Podcast. Is that, am I correct? Yeah, it's kind of oh. new, but yeah. Oh, okay, cool. It is new. I was, I was going to ask you, I also read the article about Nino, right? The article and, and uh, episode 73. So I saw that and I saw that come in through email. And I'm like, hey, this is, this is a shout out to our team. This is what we call content repurposing. But I love how you talk about, I don't do social media. My VAs do it for me. Or at least I saw that somewhere. Um, let me ask you, which one came first? Was it, the, uh, v was it the video that came first and then the blog? Or was it the blog then the video? So this is, this is actually a, kind of an interesting illustration of how things work with people in the Philippines for me. Mm -hmm. So I, for a long time, I did not, I, we, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people on an email list that I never emailed for years. Right. 
Um, and because I, I couldn't, I didn't have the capacity to write the emails. Um, I would make videos for YouTube occasionally, but mostly just to train, like to teach content, right? There was no way I was going to do a podcast. That just wasn't even a thing. And then I decided I, I need to write this newsletter. So I started writing it with help. And then I managed to get one of my OFS to write most of the things. And then I, I always go in and modify them. Um, but she's getting really, really good at it now. Um, and when, when I, when I got that, I took that on. So I had that time in my week in my work week. And when I got that off of my plate, I went from like two hours a week of writing newsletters to like 30 minutes a week of writing newsletters. Then I realized, okay, I can now do a podcast. So I started recording audios for these podcasts and like 40 episodes in, I realized it takes me no more work to record a video for this podcast episode. I get the same exact audio and I get YouTube content for it. Right? So it's the same, it's the same. And I'm recording the podcast is the same as my newsletter. Almost. Sometimes I'll talk about more things in the podcast than the newsletter. Cause you know, an email needs to be shorter, even though mine aren't super short. Um, and so I got, I got a really good newsletter, a podcast and YouTube channel, all with very, very little work from me. And it built upon itself when I realized, oh yeah, I don't have to do anything here. My video editor is going to take this video that I send. I don't even do that. I don't even send it. I record and upload it. I'll record six, seven episodes in a day and I'll upload them all to Google drive and send an email and saying, I uploaded these. And that's the end of it. I never see it again. He takes the audio out and gets the podcast ready. Someone else publishes the podcast. Someone writes the content for the podcast description. He edits the video. So it's correct. Someone else publishes on YouTube and writes the description. Um, someone else takes the, the newsletter and publishes it on my blog and links the newsletter to it before it gets sent out. Just, you know, like I, I don't do any of that stuff. So all in the Philippines, every bit of it. Love it. How, how impactful has that been for your business? I don't know. Um, and that's kind of one of the keys that I've always, I've always lived by. I, I don't know what impact things have. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what works. We do everything. Like even down to like the smallest things. Like I have people in the Philippines that participate in forums, online forums. They just participate. Every once in a while, they mention online jobs, but usually they're just contributing, right? Mm. I don't know if that's effective or not. I think it is. I think something's working there, John. <laughs> we do something on social media. I don't know what it is because I don't do it, but someone in the Philippines does it for me. We run Facebook ads. I have an idea of how effective that is because I get data behind it. Um, I don't know. You know, I don't know how effective things are. We just do everything we can think of. And somehow it all works. We, we might name this epi episode. I don't know. And you shouldn't either. Right. <laughs> join, the, join the one VA challenge. Listen, John, this was so good, man. I, I such a great ending too. And honestly, I personally want to give a big shout out to, to you on the air and thank you for changing um, our business. Cause that's what it's been built and it's changed lives. Right. I get pictures all the time of, you know, <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Like, you know, it, it, and it's one of the proudest things I've done because I've seen that the, the, the lives we've been able to change. And I honestly wouldn't have been able to do that without your platform. That's onlinejobs.ph. And that is no plug. I reached out to John because I wanted to thank him and I thought it'd be fair to thank him on the air. And maybe there's a few people out there who resonate with this message and say, you know what, I can not only change my business too, but I can also change the lives of others as well. So this episode was brought to you by investedtalent.com via onlinejobs.ph because that's who we're powered by. So thank you, John, for stepping into the lab with me, man. This was a great one. And where can we just, you know, I love what you do and your new podcast. We talked about your new book, even though I know I, I, I mispronounce this word all the time. Is it lever or lever? Lever. Lever. Yeah. Lever. Yeah. yeah. The, the outsourcing, outsourcing lever. lever. Yeah. I'm going to get my hands on that. Make sure to drop you a review, but where can people uh, tune into what you're actively doing right now these days? 
So johnjonas.com is my, is my personal, like it's where, it's where I publish my newsletter. Yeah. Um, if you want to get a hold of me, you can use the contact us link on any of my sites, onlinejobs.ph or one BAOA or johnjonas.com. Or, uh, it doesn't come to me. Obviously it goes to someone <laughs> in the Philippines, but if you ask for me, they know to send it to me and I will respond to you. Um, that's, that's how I'll, I'll, I'll respond. Um, I, you can try me on Facebook, but you're going to get someone in the Philippines or Instagram or whatever. Cause I, I, I just despise social media. So <laughs> I love it. Well, if it, we're very glad that we've been able to reach you through social. So I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate your time to go on and enjoy that skiing. Do it for us. Thanks, man. Enjoy yourself. Thanks, John, man. This was amazing. Talk uh, to you later. Yeah, man, this was great. I'll, I'll share with you when it goes out and uh, go ahead and conquer the rest of your day, man. You really uh, added a lot of value today. Thank you. Hold up. We've come to the end of the Real Estate Experiment show brought to you by my team at investedtalent.com. However, the show will certainly not stop from here because you will share this with someone who was not in the lab with us. Any value that you found was helpful, any experiment that you feel can benefit someone else who was not here, please share it with them. And number two, definitely leave us a review. It helps us and it helps other people find our show to benefit from experimenters like yourself, right? We are trying to build an experiment nation where the experiments that you resonate the most with, you will double down on. That is the goal. Now, the reason why the show does not end here is because my team at Invested Talent repurposes this show so that other people who are not consuming the show, either by the medium that you're consuming in it now, whether it's a podcast, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Instagram, wherever you are, we will take clips from this show and repurpose them and amplify them, put them on multiple social media platforms so that the message and the experiments can be consumed in a way that fits the person best. Now, if you'd like to have the same for your brand, make sure you go to investedtalent.com where we've helped multiple, multiple thought leaders in the real estate space repurpose their content so that they can grow their brand. We specifically work with people who are looking to have an impact, whether you have an existing show or a brand new show, whether it's a podcast, whether it's clips or interviews or episodes, we will take that raw content and repurpose it on multiple social media platforms because your voice, your experiments need to be heard in the marketplace so that we can all have an impact, so we can impact others and we can all elevate together. On that note, make sure you tune into the next one and let's build y'all.